Episode 55, Repacks with Matt from Ultimate Sports Breakers. Bonus. Put this up, seven minute mark, three, two, one. Okay, so we're going to try this take two. Uh, we had Thank a little you. bit of technical difficulty. <laughs> it's all good. So welcome to uh, The Car Diary by Javi S. Thompson. I'm your host, Denny Cards. This is going to be episode 55 because I know that episode 54 was uh, talking with a repacker, a wonderful guest, Jonathan from Roto Breaks mm -hmm. and Roto Box. Uh, so I know this one's going to be episode 55 because what I wanted to do with this uh, interview uh, with this recording is posted up as soon as it's done because um, repacks are such a hot topic in the in the right. hobby right now, and so I want it to be timely. So today we have uh, Matt. He is the president and owner of USB, which stands for Ultimate Sports Breaks, mm -hmm. and he is from I can say this right Ogden, yeah. Utah. Yeah, yeah, based out of Ogden, Utah. Uh, USB has been around for a couple of years now, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And um, you know, before I before I ask him to kind of explain how he started the company and who we started with and the commonality that they all have, right. I wanted to say thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for you know the the value you bring to the hobby and uh, welcome to the show. No, I appreciate you reaching out and you know excited to get this going and you know hopefully answer some questions that you know a lot of people have. Absolutely. The Instagram audience never disappoints. They always have some really <laughs> right. good questions. Right. So before before we get to kind of like the story and, you know, you can talk about your hobby journey and all that, too. Um, I did this thing called the Meet the Grader series where I talked to some uh, uh, grading companies about the grading space and how they do things. And I people really enjoyed it. I don't think that I'm going to be doing the same here, meaning I'm not going to be doing multiple interviews with multiple repackers. You know, I had one mm -hmm. with uh, Roto today, you, and I think that's going to be it. But I really did want to get another perspective, right? Because no one person represents an entire space anywhere in the hobby. No, not at and all. And so, so I, I really look forward to kind of hearing from you. And, you know, the more you're able to kind of share, I think the more people will really be able to understand. So right. having said that, uh, before we get to kind of like the, I, I kind of have called it the comp to table, like farm to table, but like going from buying to uh, packing to shipping. Um, could, could you kind of tell us about yourself and your hobby journey and how USB came to uh, begin? Yeah, I mean, I've, you know, collected sports cards, you know, my entire life, you know, I started when I was a kid back in 1999. Um, I think that was like the Eric Crouch, Cade McNown, Dante Culpepper, like yeah. my PC at that time was Cade McNown. You know, I just oh. I kept seeing him pop up, uh, you know, up, up all over the, you know, the different products. And so he was my guy, you know, back then. And then uh, I think I was getting into high school and, or it was like middle school or high school, but you know, sports were just getting a little bit busier to where I wasn't collecting as much. Mm -hmm. I just so happened to skip the year of 2000 during Tom Brady's rookie year when, mm -hmm. you know, the 2000 product just was not expensive and Tom Brady mm -hmm. was not who you're looking for. And then I got mm -hmm. back into it in 2001, 2002. And mm. so I skipped over the most important year of them all, you know? <laughs> and so, you know, dove into 2005 a little bit, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, as a kid, you know, you just, you know, collect and, you know, but then as I got older, you know, got into college and graduated from college, got a job, you know, that's when you start getting your adult money and, mm -hmm. you know, and social media started and, you know, started to kick in with Facebook and, uh, YouTube cards, infinity. I don't know if you've ever heard of, yeah. heard of them. They're one of the OG, probably one of the first you know, uh, YouTube breakers, yes. you buy a box and it was very strange on how they did it back then compared to like nowadays where they would record it on their camcorder and then post it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And so, but they're like, they were very, a very honest group and still today they, they are, but I hit like one of my biggest cards. I had like a, it was like a six like card booklet where like each letter spelled out magic and each letter was Ooh. a super factor. Each letter was signed by magic. So it wow. spelled out magic and it was signed by each one. And 
I was hooked from then on out. You know, I just love, you know, I was, you know, waiting for live streams and for, you know, YouTube videos to get posted. And so I just really love that avenue. And, um, you know, paying attention to it more, I found, you know, companies like uh, Hip Parade and Super Break that were, you know, coming onto the scene. And I was surrounded by cards at home and I just kind of compared apples to apples and said, I think I can make one of these, you know, with cards that I have, um, you know, from winning cards on, you know, through razes or pulling cards from breaks, whatever it might be. And, um, you know, got creative and created a, a product, I would say about four years ago. Um, it was called Epic Sports Breaks. Okay. And, um, you know, then we, you know, made an adjustment and, you know, developed ultimate sports breaks and so, and funny how it kind of came upon us. I play college football mm-hmm. at San Jose State, and I replaced a senior long snapper uh, whose name is Grant. And I saw him in a Facebook group in sports cards, and I messaged him. I hadn't talked to him in ten years. Uh-huh. I'm like, "What are you doing in this in this group? You know, are you into sports cards?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm into sports cards." I was like, "Well, me too." And he was like, well, what do you do? And I explained him about the repack. And he was like, boom, I got a group that, you know, is really big on, you know, breaking on whatnot right now. And, you know, would love to introduce your product to them, see if it's something that they're interested in. We sent out a couple of cases. It I just absolutely blew up. And, you know, the rest was kind of history to where, you know, we were able to grow. And my first employee that I, that I hired was I, you know, once I was done playing college football, I got into training long snappers. And so I still do to this day, not as much, you know, that was mine. You know, that's something that like, I'm very passionate about that. I do want to get back into at some point mm-hmm. you know, once we're comfortable here, but you know, I trained long snappers for about eight years, you know, while still doing cards, but, um, but one of my snappers, his name was Wyatt, who I trained in high school and he went on to play at football at Hawaii you know, I called him and was just checking up on him, seeing what he was doing. And he said that he just graduated. I was thinking about moving back to California or Tennessee or Texas to find a job. And I told him about, you know, what we're doing with repacks in the sports card world and said, do you want to move out to Utah? And two weeks later, he was on a one-way ticket with three bags and, you know, moved out here. And so, you know, it's definitely like a little triangle of, you know, long snappers, you know, wow. here with ultimate sports breaks. And so, you know, so that's how our, you know, kind of core team started and, you know, we've grown since and, you know, hired some younger, you know, guys that are here now locally that, you know, can help us out with the, you know, day-to-day operation. That is awesome. So out of those three bags, I imagine two of them were like full of slabs and cards. And then the other one was like clothes. Wyatt knows everything about sports, didn't know a thing about sports cards. Oh, wow. Which is what I love about sports cards. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like anybody can get into, you know, sports cards. It's, just having that general understanding on one paying attention to sports, mm-hmm. you know, trends, players, you know, the different things that are just going on and, you know, on, you know, in your day to day and sports card life. And, you know, but just kind of comparing it to, you know, like a stock market, you know, right. and being able to identify values, like anybody can do it. You just have to be willing to put in the work to gain that knowledge. Yeah. And, and you definitely have to understand price points and the hierarchy, right? I mean, like oh, 100%. when I came in to the ultra modern world, like I didn't, you know, I, I collected, you know, two periods of my life, you know, pre 2000s and then like the mid to late uh, 2000s. Um, and then, you know, it was like kind of a pre Panini period or era. Right. And, you know, I didn't know about so uh, you know which how it went right like prism select optic mosaic like to me i'm just like oh okay like that looks shiny and pretty and cool (laughs) but but, uh there is a hierarchy at least with cards of price points um of course you know if people love mosaic then they can go for it but i had to i I definitely had a learning curve and i didn't even own a slab until like last year um rating was not a thing for me uh back when we were kids right i mean right that, that just you know, people graded, I guess, like coins or something, but not, not cards to, to, to my understanding. So um, the fact that all three of you are long snappers and you have like this, you know, uh, it, it must be wild. I mean, you were the apprentice or you replaced Grant, but you're the president and owner of USBs. Okay. 
So right. it's almost like uh, Eli Manning having like two Super Bowl rings and like Peyton. You know? <laughs> right, right. No, um, sure. no, but that's really cool. So all three of your long snappers, um, that's a really hard position. I, I We're not going to turn this into a long snapper or football podcast, but that is a very difficult. You have to snap and block right away. Right. And it's got to be a specific location and specific speed, uh, you know, for long snappers. And it's, it's very attention to detail. It's only, I, we compare it to golf, you know, mm. it's a very, it's, it's one motion. It's, you know, one, you know, dynamic to doing it, but you have to be able to adjust to body types and, you know, shapes and sizes and, you know, different levels. And so, um, you know, it's, it's definitely unique, but you'll never hear about it unless the snapper messes up and, Right. You know, all of a sudden it causes, you know, chaos in the game, you know, or turnover. Then you're right. like, who just did that? You know, <laughs> everyone, everyone assumes that it's the center, you know, of the offense. Uh-huh. But, you know, but if, if you can go a full season without, you know, having your name called because of a bad snap, then mm-hmm. you did your job. So my, I just realized my, my wife's best friend, um, you know, her nephew uh, is is like in high school and is a long mm-hmm. snapper. I'm, I might have to like ask you offline, but he is like yeah. he is potentially going to be a D1 scholarship athlete uh, oh, nice. with long snapping. But, yep. you know, he's like a junior. So, you know, we, we, I don't know. But um, let's, that's... let's put it this way. There's a, <laughs> a, a snapper. He played at Azusa Pacific. It was Division two uh, college. He mm-hmm. played tight end. He played baseball like he's your all god athlete just yeah. very six four just 235 pounds mm-hmm. he looks like a professional tight end yeah i started working with him like a sophomore junior year of college on long mm-hmm. snapping yeah he has been on like five different teams he was on the rams uh team when they went to the super bowl i went to the super nice. bowl that year when they won and now, oh. he's the and now he's with the packers but it's like it was really cool on like you know he's just snapping in the nfl making what million dollars a year to snap a football nice. Nice, but it's he's dealing with a lot of, you know, high level athletes that are, you know, trying to, you know, make his job and, you know, very difficult, you know. Oh, so, oh no, absolutely. So. Um, and uh, yeah. So, <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, I I have so many questions, but I'll I'll ask them offline. One I do have to ask because I think the listeners might like this. So, what is the worst conditions in long snapping? Is it rain or is it snow or is it something completely else? I'm gonna say snow. Or uh, winds, yeah, like well, it's just, it can it can rain, you know, but the temperature might not be you know that cold. But like when you're talking with cold yeah. and snow and ice. Yeah, ice. Yeah. You know, where it's like ice if it's ice. fresh snow, uh-huh. it's fun. You know, oh, man. But if it's been snowing like all morning and you're playing that afternoon, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You're playing with slush, but then you're talking uh, like frozen footballs and oh know, man, it's, it's a Don't different dynamic. It's a different dynamic. It, but I like it's it's something that like people can work through just because it just makes them focus a little bit more. Uh, gotcha, you know, gotcha. They just have to like really emphasize like certain pieces of the snap, you know. But it. I played in both snow and rain. I played in slush. I played in like light snow. Mm-hmm. I'll take light snow over any of those. Gotcha. You know, when it's like fresh snow, like you just started the game and it just started snowing, like people have fun. Oh, but if it's man. Been snowing man. that whole morning, that... I do not want to play that day. Who, who hasn't played some football in the snow with your friends as a kid? Like, that's like the best feeling is like, I mean, especially if it's like a snow day, but like, um, if I, like I, I love to. If I was an offensive <laughs> lineman, you know, or something like that linebacker like yeah I play in any condition possible oh my gosh i i back or receiver forget about so, it so it's funny how earlier you're like adulting you have discretionary income so you get to spend it i mean adulting is so hard right and it's like i love right. that like i used to love snow like when i was a kid like mm-hmm. a lot of kids right you just love snow and then you get older and then you have responsibilities then you have to like dig out your car <laughs> right. you have to uh, dig out the sidewalk right. you have to do the yeah and and you're trying not to fall because if you fall on ice especially as you're older you're gonna really hurt yourself as opposed to when you're a kid and you just pick yourself right back mm-hmm. up and so so thank goodness as an adult the one thing we have to look forward to if you're in the hobby is you can enjoy uh, uh, your discretionary income on cards. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Oh my goodness. So I know um, 
we uh we got to get into repacks. Thank you for taking us down that road a little bit. Um, yes. And uh, so so this whole idea that I've had, right? Uh, it helps me keep on track. Comp to table. It's like the buying, the ship, uh, the packing, then the shipping, and like mm -hmm. who you ship to. Um, I wanted to kind of maybe spend like. I don't know. I, I'm really bad at keeping time on this podcast, but like maybe like 15 minutes on each or something like that. Yeah. The biggest, again, uh, the reason I'm even doing this and the reason it's a hot topic is, you know, a very prominent um, social media influencer, you know, Chad Blesnick, C. Blez talked about repacks and, you know, I, I made a little bit of content about it saying good repackers are good for the hobby. Bad ones right. are bad for the hobby. Uh, and what makes for good and bad, I'll definitely ask you. But, you know, in my opinion, it was just transparency, integrity, value, things like that. And so the buying, though, is what really got people. On that video, he was talking about how, oh, you know, these repackers buy 95% and he can't buy anything lower than that. And it's really tough. And, you know, like they clear, they clear out inventory and dealers, you know, completely and all this stuff. So I think buying is the thing that really got um, a lot of you know, traction or discussion on it. So can you kind of talk to us about how y'all buy for USB? Well, I just, I just had recently watched that video of Blaz and I thought it was just funny and ironic that his brother made a similar video of, we hate repacks, but come buy ours, you know? <laughs> so it's like, you kind of have to say how it is. You, you got one, one guy that's against it, you know, and one guy that's All against right. others, but please come pay money for ours, you know? So at the end of the day, it's their company that's selling repacks. So, you know, I think his video is irrelevant, you know, and I and I love Blaz. I, you know, I love what they do. I think they're really good for the hobby, but mm -hmm. I think they're more so just upset that there's more competition of mm -hmm. buying cards at card shows. Right. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with the dynamic. Like, you know, it's, he had made a couple of comments about buying cards at, you know, he wants to go buy cards at 80, 85%. Yeah. Well, what is he going to do with that card? He's going to go sell it at 95, 100, 110%. Right. You right. know, so it's like he's essentially a repacker as well, but it's mm -hmm. more like live, you know, at a shop or whatever it is. And so, but like, you know, he's a flipper, you know, in that aspect. And so it's just mm -hmm. literally the same exact thing. You know, they make their own repack, same exact thing. They're buying cards and they're putting in a repack. And so, but there's a lot of like, you know, people that are upset that there's more buyers at card shows. You tell me one vendor who's selling shows that's upset about that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they're showing up to shows and people are coming up and buying their entire, you know, you know, you know, showcase. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, come, please come buy my cards. You yeah. know, if you're at a, if you're a vendor at a show and you know, you're able to sell out, you know, 50 to 78, you know, hundred percent of your showcase, that's a great day, you know, for that vendor. So, yeah. but like, you know, the thing with vendors is like, there's so many different kinds of vendors at these shows. Hmm. And, Talk to us about that. You know, and I think you like the different types of vendors are, you know, one, you know, people are buying in bulk, you know, bulk, you know, collections from people that don't go to shows, mm -hmm. um, you know, or they might be a local car. I come across local card shops that, set up as vendors, but they have like a local shop, you know, somewhere else where they're mm -hmm. buying, you know, locally at, you know, around town. And mm -hmm. so you have vendors who are, you know, bulk graders where they're buying cards raw, they're sending them in for bulk grading. They mm -hmm. come in and, you know, they have hundreds of slabs in their showcase. And so, um, but, you know, then you also have other vendors that you can definitely tell right out the gate, like if, you know, they're, you could tell, right. You could tell by their prices on, you know, what type of vendor that they are. You know, they're already like, oh, you know, 120, 130% over, you know, you know, overpriced. And the first thing that they say is, you know, I'll give you 20% off, you know, sticker price. You know, then you do that math yeah. and it's like, that's right at a hundred percent comps, right. you know? So it's like, those guys can be a little bit challenging to work with, but I mean, they do things, you know, specific way no harm, no foul. We just move on, you yeah. know? And so, but, um, but I mean, you can also sit at a table and you get people, your everyday buyers on TikTok, whatnot, IG, Facebook that pull cards from, you know, break or pull cards from, you know, hobby boxes, their local card shop or their local card shop. And they'd walk up to the table and it's like, Hey, I'm interested in selling some cards, you know, 
you know, are you guys buying? Yes, we're buying. You know, let me look at your cards. Hey, it's valued at a hundred bucks. I can offer you like 75 bucks mm-hmm. or 80 bucks. Okay. Perfect. Absolutely. You know, and so, you know, but I think, you know, it's, you know, there are people that are upset. I've had vendors, you know, who do sell cards to us. They, there's, they are saying like, it's a lot more challenging and a lot more competitive to buy cards at shows because, you know, there's more repacks coming out on, on you know, coming out on the stage to where they have to buy stronger. We have to mm-hmm. buy stronger. Yeah. You know, when people come and fly to Utah and sell cards to us, we're buying at a hundred percent. Yeah. Why? Cause it's a convenient, you know, it's a convenience that we don't have to go to shows you know, to buy these cards. Like these vendors are traveling all over the country yeah. to buy cards. We'll buy them on 100% comps because we, we got to compensate for their time, you know, their, you know, travel, whatever it might be. But like, that's a reward that they get for traveling to Nashville over the, you know, for three or four days away from their families. Right. And they book a flight, you know, and they got to get a rental car. They got to do the whole nine yards just to bring us cards. We'll pay 100%. You know, but obviously when we, you know, as a team, when we go to car shows, yeah, we're going to be buying how everybody else buys, which is that, you know, you're 80, 85, 90%. You know, we might be buying a little bit better, you know, but we also explain to vendors and, you know, customers like, hey, like we flew out to, you know, to be out here for the weekend, you know, from Utah, you know, we have to cover that cost as well. And so, but, you know, it's when people are, just very visibly upset that there's more repacks out there. They're only upset because they're not able to, there's more of a challenge Mm. and more of a competition for them to get what they want. At the end of the day, you just have to be there earlier. You have to work faster. Mm. You just have to be smarter. It's called competition for a reason. You know what I mean? And so it's, you know, so it's, I, it just is what it is. You know, but, you know, repackers, like we are buying stronger because at the end of the day, we just need the cards, you know, from mm-hmm. a repack you know, standpoint. And so, but yeah. Awesome. You know, um, talking about working, you know, getting there earlier, working faster, working, you know, harder. You know, I, I love, you know, comps we know stands for like, you know, comparison points mm-hmm. for other cards, but comps, you know, that's how you spell competition, right? Comp, competition. Right. Um. I do not have any uh, uh, pricing guide app people as sponsors, <laughs> but you know we all know the 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 tools people use, right? One thirty yep. point card ladder, uh, yep. alt, alt. Yep. So I wanted to ask you, uh, and, you know, eBay sold, and you know, almost everyone just drives it off that, which is interesting because, right? Because when you sell on eBay, you have that percentage taken off. If it's twelve to fourteen percent, I mean, you as a seller, you're, you're kind of right out of the gate. You know, you're, you can't right. get more yeah. than, you know, 88%, right. So, right. or 86%. So um, buying at 75, 80%, I mean, we are talking like maybe sometimes double digit margins, but sometimes single digit margins, right. right. For, for, for yourself. Or. Yeah. But I mean, like, you know, we've, we've purchased cards too off like my slabs, which is. Oh like yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Significantly different you know, price points. Um, you can buy sports cards off Burbank sports cards.com. Uh-huh. You know, they, you know, you're, it's, you know, that, you know, buying off their website versus, you know, eBay, two different, you know, animals, two different dynamics. And so there's different ways to kind of, you know, swing that, you know, yeah. for sure. But like, you know, I think there's more, there's a lot of social media influencer influencers that are opening up Shopify, you know, That's so there's right. different, there's different ways of like, uh, I think Talon sports cards. I just bought like, you know, five or six cards off of him. Oh, nice. You know, he's a big social media influencer. And I just, you know, mm-hmm. he had a bunch of cards on his Shopify, TikTok shop. You know, they're encouraging people to list, you know, uh, their slabs on there as well. Uh, the different fees on, you know, PWCC and yep. houses, Golden, yeah. they're all different. And so, you know, so from like, when it comes to like that, per, you know, that perspective, because I have challenged like, you know, vendors before and was like, you can go sell the card, you know, on eBay and take a 15%, you know, fee. And he just straight up said, like, he just like looked around and was like, are we at a show or are we on eBay? Like, do you want the card or not? You know, I was like, uh, touche, man. You know, I, I hear what you're saying. Back you and know? forth. Yeah. It, go, it, it goes, it goes both ways. And so yep. that's where you just got to eliminate, you know, just 
forget the the you just have to pick your battles. Yeah, got yeah. gotta love card show talk, right? I mean, local, regional, national. It's, right. it's like the same conversations happening everywhere, and it's like you got the seller sides, like the sellers, the vendors know what to say, or they right. learn what to say. The buyers, they know what to say, and it's just I love it. It's a dance, though. Um, I is. love the negotiation part. So. Um, when it comes to comps, uh, again, buying at certain comps, like some mm. of these, right, they do create comparison points. eBay, definitely, of course, that's like the number one. But, you know, uh, if you go to 130 point, you know, and, and other places that derive you know, that scrape the data off eBay, you know, they PWCC, Golden, they do turn into comps. But, you know, um, uh, buying from, you know, sh of course, shows. People aren't getting any comps created. Shopify, I imagine, isn't right. either. My Slaps isn't. Uh, TikTok Shop isn't. And so um, I, it's funny. I haven't done a, a, a podcast read. I've, I've created a uh, read for a sponsor. So I'll just give a mm -hmm. shout out to my card post. But they also mm -hmm. have a platform that's an online marketplace where, you know, things that are transacted, bought, bought sold, and traded, they are not um, turned into uh, comparison points. So. Right. Um, but so yeah, I'll talk offline as to why maybe USB. Right. There's some really nice cards uh, up in uh, my card post, but like the, the whole comps. Like how are how are you? There's so many different ways to do comps. That the easiest right. and lazy, laziest way, in my opinion, is just last sale. But then there's also people who do the last average of the last three, or it depends on when the sales were right. Because there are some cards that are commodity cards that transact right. almost daily or weekly, right. and then some you just don't see pop up often at all. So our th my thing is I try and go off of – I look at a lot of different things. I look at, you know, the average. I look at I, I look at trends, you know, from how long ago they were um, versus, like, now um, mm -hmm. versus how the player is playing. You know, say if a card is $225 comps and the guy is trying to sell for $250, bucks, mm -hmm. you know, but the card hadn't sold for two months – you know, because it's out of 10. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but the player is, you know, on the up and coming and he's, you know, he's performing really well. There's some things that, like, I can be like, all right, I see, like, where you're going with that. Like, you know, if it were to sell for that, you know, sp you know that specific time frame, it might be different now. You know, mm -hmm. it's just not. Um, you know, but we're very simple, like, with buying when it's, like, when you scan a card on alt, like if someone pulls a card and they go to comp it, we try and buy that card based off what that customer is going to see. Okay. So like, say if like you bought into a break out of a USB, you hit a, a very common, you know, card, a Jalen Hurts Mosaic Rookie Auto BGS 9.5. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's a, a more than enough on a pop report, yeah. you know, for that to where you can just scan it, you know, on alt or look it up on, you know, card ladder and you can find a you know pretty recent comp, you know, yeah. to where it's like that's the number that I want to buy at to where these customers are gonna, you know, see when they look it up themselves. Because there's right. a lot of people that, you know, there's different various ways of people that how they break our product, you know, there's stash and pass to where they decide whether they wanna keep the card or, you know, let it move on to the next customer. Mm -hmm. You know, and so they're trying to decide quickly on what they want. So they go immediately to card ladder or whatever it is. And so we just try and buy it like what they're going to see, you know, and every card that we buy, we buy it at a specific, you know, price point to where we can explain it to each individual customer. And you're talking mm -hmm. just hundreds of, you know, hundreds of cards right. that are here, thousands of cards. And, you know, but each one we have, you know, an, an explanation as to like why we bought it, mm -hmm. you know, how we bought it and why, why we bought it you know, and why it's at its price point, you know? And so, you know, but I mean, there's, you know, but we also try and be really smart with buying as well, you know, just in regards to, there's some vendors that try and, you know, manipulate, you know, mm -hmm. certain prices, you know, I'm a big like advocate on eBay auctions, mm -hmm. not, you know, what is the PWCC auctions or golden auctions. Uh, here's a really good card. Uh, Jamar Chase, Optic, the rookies, like auto. I think it's mm -hmm. out, of, out of 99. Okay. Really common card. If there's a comp on golden auctions mm -hmm. for that, for that little of a card, it's like a $200 card. Mm -hmm. 
that card does not belong on golden auctions. So it might sell, you know, for 150 bucks or 200 bucks, but you put it on eBay, it's where it's more of like your everyday buyer. It's where like that card is probably gonna be worth a little bit more, you know, or, or whatever it might be. And so, you know, that's where you would try and compare, you know, especially like the different like auction sites that are out there. Okay. You know? can, so can, you, show up. can I ask you, what do you mean by that card doesn't belong in golden though? Uh, so golden golden has presented itself as a very like high end prestigious like card, like a card that I just showed you a little bit ago, a LeBron James Bowman huh. Bowman refractor. This yes. used to be like a fifty thousand dollar card back in oh. you know back in I, there there were comps back in twenty twenty one, right? You know fifty thousand dollar card, you know, yeah. and so like but that's what golden you know, definitely advertise themselves to be I see to where you mean, like you had to apply to be a buyer. I you see. have to have specific qualifications to be a buyer. But it's like, if you're doing that, you're probably, you know, you probably got a pretty significant bankroll to where a $200 card is not going to be on your radar to buy. Got it. Got you it. All I mean? right. I do appreciate you saying that because, yeah. you know, it's interesting because, you know, when I submit to PSA, they say, do you want to vault directly and sell directly to golden? So, you know, I thought that that might ha that might have changed, but also, also, you know, perceptions are important, and you know, the well, type of buyers that attracts. They're they're definitely pushing to you know be able to sell some of these smaller, you know, be a bigger like auction house. Yeah. You know, but I mean, I just don't see the eBay auction. I just don't see like the auction. I would say the auction. I guess. Oh, the the different auction like outlets that are out there, mm -hmm. I don't see eBay ever losing its power for like right. the little, for like the little guys. You know, yeah. it's the yeah. it's the best marketplace in the world. You know, for those types of cards. Right, right. You know, and so can you share another kind of like thing that vendors might do to try to manipulate? You know, not just like a repacker, but just a buyer, like just something to help the listeners out here. <laughs> I've seen. I've seen you know vendors with multiple car multiple multiples of the same card. I've seen you know the auctions be at like low one hundreds, and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden there's a couple buy it nows at like two hundred dollars mm -hmm. or whatever it might be. I can list this card right now. If say if I have ten of these, mm -hmm. I can list this card on eBay. Look at look at my buddy next door and be like, hey, buy this you know on eBay for two hundred bucks. I bought six of them for. A hundred bucks each, you know. Boom! Now I can say that oh. my other five are worth two hundred bucks. You're talking about, I mean, that's shill bidding, right? It's without it's, intent to pay. It's, it's, no, no, you can you can still spend the two hundred bucks to okay. buy that one card, but I, now I'm going to sell my other six that I bought for a hundred oh, bucks. Got it. Got you know it. what I mean? Like I've seen yeah. that because, like, it's mass greater. Not there's it hasn't I haven't seen it a lot, but that's something that's very sneaky of like. Mm. Where like I explain, I'm like, listen, there's six auctions that ended at you know 100 to 125 dollars. There's yeah. one buy it now at 200 bucks that I'm not gonna fall for. I see. You know, I will buy these at 120 dollars because that's what the auctions were, mm -hmm. but I'm not going for that one buy it now because then I can, you know, because there's people that I kid you not will put cards up like. That. Oh, could you did you lose my voice? Yeah, just for a second, but you're back. Okay, perfect. Uh, you know, but there's, uh, you it's know, the fault. It's a like a false comp. Exactly, but it's like, what if I'm just like someone that just wants? I just need money. Yeah. You know, so it's like I've been holding on to this, you know, five hundred dollar Jalen Hurth for uh -huh. four months. Uh -huh. My car just broke down. I just need three hundred bucks to fix. I want to put this on eBay yeah. and sell it for three hundred bucks. Mm. Is it, does that mean that the, the car's now worth three hundred bucks? No, that's why, like, I really look at, like, eBay auctions more so than I do buy it now. Okay. Um, you know, from that perspective. All and right. So, but, yeah, there's there's some sneaky ones of people that do masquerading to where, you know, it, it happens a little more so in, like, you know, Facebook groups. Mm. So, um, so that's just something that where people have, like, you know, mass quantity of one card. They'll go buy. They'll go buy that yeah. one card for a high price, and then they'll bad they'll, actors. Tis, they'll, go, tis. they'll go. They'll go razzle for do all this. that price. It's crazy. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah. You'll yeah. never know. Do you? Um, you showed a lot of slabs on screen. Do you also buy raw for USB, or is it only slabs? 
So if it's raw, we usually buy raw. You know, oh, that's raw. raw. I'm sorry. That is a raw one. Yeah. yeah the, no, the Jamar Chase I mean, we, love, we love like the Panini Seals. You know, in case, the redemptions. Got it. Got you it. Know, got but it. I mean, you know, I've, you know, raw autos, kaboom, downtowns. Like we love all that stuff. You know, okay. the, the big thing is that you have to watch out for is, you know, the card condition. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we did have one just recently. It was a Tyrese Maxi, you know, contenders, like red or blue auto. Mm -hmm. And it looked fine to us. But when you put on the, the customer, got it, wanted to get it graded, yeah. put it underneath the light and saw that, you know, there's, you know, some scratches. But like you take it out of the light and you can't see it. And so, you know, but that doesn't mean that those cards are not worth anything. Cards right, are right. worth there's raw value all day long. And so, you know, but like when it comes to like, you know, a mosaic Genesis raw, yeah, you know, we don't generally buy that. I'd rather have it as PSA nine, you know, than have it as a raw, but like Got autos, it. kabooms, downtowns all day long. We're buying those. Right. And so, man, um, those scratches were probably from a jealous James Harden just uh, on his way out, just scratching up all of the, <laughs> well, it's like you, see, you see videos of like these athletes, like when they're signing on card, yeah, it they don't treat them nicely. Mm. I say this all the time that baseball players are more careful than like basketball players and you know football players. If you, I I see very few initial or sloppy or bad baseball player autos. I feel mm -hmm. like the 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 bad example autos are really primarily from football and baseball. I just don't um, know if it's like uh, something that is more more so in like contracts or if there's a like a representative mm -hmm. you know with these guys through tops you know or fanatics or whatever tops is right now versus yeah like yeah a, yeah you well know, not just like, that i'm in, i'm sorry to interrupt you but uh i totally could see the panini uh tops difference but also like you know in baseball you have to humble yourself you go through the minor leagues it's that romantic version you know the romantic the, the they, bus ride they still, they still yeah. have to earn earn it they, you have to earn it. So I think maybe when they get into the, the to the show, it's like much more appreciated and they really do appreciate the fans. You see the the great fan service by the baseball players and it's it's you know, they come out and sign before games, you know, like near the dugout. And then you have the almost instant millionaires in basketball where they're just like, you know, in AAU ball, they're immediately given the keys to to the kingdom and they're like, Oh, um, hey, by the way, be humble, but think about your fans, and it's like Zion was right. a was a celebrity before he even touched uh Court and Duke. You're right. So I don't know. Just yeah. I, I think about that stuff a lot. <laughs> no, for sure. For sure. Um, so so we're we're talking so you the slabs you just showed, uh I didn't see any baseball. Would you say football is like your number one most popular sport for your repair? Oh yeah. Football oh. is your year football is your year round, but it's also mm -hmm. like the easiest for new breakers existing breakers to yeah. you know catch the attention of your everyday collector but also mm -hmm. new collectors okay you know it's just the easiest to like to experience you yeah. know from a breaker and a collector standpoint basketball is a little bit different baseball's mm -hmm. very different okay you know it's where you know values i i will i swear by it i talked to you know talked to you about this the other day that baseball mm -hmm. Baseball has more flash and more quality value than mm -hmm. I think football and basketball does. But it's the mm -hmm. hardest it's the hardest product, you know, for for a lot of people to sell. But like once we you know, there's a, there a few breakers that have tried like our multi sport. Yeah. And they are just completely floored. There's like holy crap, like how can we haven't done multi sport this whole time? And I see. You know, it's cause it's more of like the conservative, like safe route of making sure that they can, you know, sell to yeah. their customers. But right, then they right. get but then they get baseball and there's like how did you get, you know, Ronald Acuna, <laughs> Mike Trout, and, you know, Vladimir Guerrero or Julio Rodriguez in the same case? And yeah, it's like, yeah. It's like, well, Ronald Acuna autos are, you know, 100 to 150 bucks versus, you know, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts. Like, yeah. you can't get their autos, like, yeah. you know, for 100 and 150 bucks, right. you know? And so it's just the, the difference in value, but, like, people appreciate it when, like, a Ronald Acuna auto comes out. No, you know, yeah, my no. crowd autos are 250 bucks now. You know, it's it's crazy. The dude's then you know, you know, he's obviously not his you know prime time, but it's still Mike Trout. Oh, totally. You know, you know what I mean? So 
Uh, so, so when it comes to your product line uh, or your SKUs, the SKUs, mm -hmm. um, just to kind of nudge you along a little bit because um, we did talk beforehand, which you know was a great chat. You said that you guys are about to launch a new SKU, right? Oh yeah, no, we're Pokemon Charizard yeah. Autos. <laughs> Charizard Autos, uh, yeah, we're getting into Pokemon, um, getting ready to launch it. We're trying to really finesse you know the little details on how we want to do that the different mm -hmm. price points mm -hmm. um, but we're going to try it out with uh with one of our one of our main customers 238 cards um they just started mm -hmm. breaking you know pokemon as well and mm -hmm. you know their customers love it Got and it. so but there it's i love pokemon from 1999 when it first came out for some mm -hmm. reason i didn't want to go buy the you know first edition packs back in the day when <laughs> Five or ten bucks, and yeah, you know, I can't. I could only imagine how many Charizard hollows. Oh I, you know, God, I can't. Let's not talk yeah. about it. <laughs> I know it's so, oh but like, gosh. but there's such a huge like market, you know, with Pokemon in itself. But like, even like sports card collectors, we have we all have kids. You know, my, mm -hmm. you know, my daughter, she loves Mewtwo. You yeah. know, and so yeah. it's like I bought her a few like you know Mewtwo cards, but she loves them. But it's like mm -hmm. talking to customers, it's like, like man, if you guys bring on you know, Pokemon repacks, like we're going to be in trouble because we have to buy them. You know? so <laughs> right. You know, because it's more so for like their kids, you know, but like Pokemon, it, it's, you know, you even go to shows and, you know, slabs are just flying. Yeah. Like you wouldn't believe. And so, oh yeah, you know, totally. So, but, I mean, like, you know, but our big thing is, you know, I'm, I'm learning about Pokemon. Right. You know, but we have a team here that, I had for about a month, I had no idea that they do as much about Pokemon as they do mm -hmm. to where like I brought it up and it's just like a whole different like atmosphere within the office to where yeah. everyone's like, you got to get this, you got to get that, like this and that, you know, people love this. And so it was, like, yeah. it was really cool to get that transition. It's... I'm like, well, that's what we need. We just needed knowledge behind it. And, right. you know, and I'm starting to learn too on, you know, the different variations and you know, like I, we have a couple PSA sevens and PSA eights, which I hate in sports cards. Uh -huh. It was like we had a PSA seven, I think it was either Pikachu or Charizard, but it was about two hundred like forty bucks. Because it was a from P yeah, a PS PSA ten of that same card is like sixty five hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, holy crap! It's like you relate that to like sports cards. Yeah. You know, a PSA seven of this <laughs> is come worth like 200 bucks because right. you know that damage versus a psa yeah. 10 which is only 600 bucks like That's why the is Jalen it hurts 95 bgs that you're showing on camera exactly yeah exactly but, but you know exactly. that's a wow thing is you know i'm definitely more sports card but you know i'm denny cards and i've my kids love pokemon and they love tcg right. and I, I remember playing magic gathering so i remember you know I, I don't discriminate with cards but it is interesting how pokemon you know there's like sports and you know like the older you know uh retired players like we we have nostalgia towards them but these players we see them uh, not just bad court performance but off court behavior right i mean just talking about giddy and franco right. like you right. know charizard's not going to disappoint you from a performance standpoint on or off yeah. the court right. so you know, I, I think it is a pretty, but, but then you don't get the highs, right? I mean, you don't have Charizard winning the Super Bowl, right? Or or like winning the MVP. So, but that's really interesting. Um, I, you know, I appreciate you saying that. Uh, you did mention a breaker though. So 238, not a sponsor. Uh, this, <laughs> none of these folks are sponsors. Uh, but I did talk to you again, great chat before we started recording. Um I was thinking about getting to the what I'm about to say near the end because it's about shipping and who you ship to and all this mm -hmm. and that. But just bringing up the breaker, I, I did want to ask you, um, for those of you who are not familiar, but some some listeners may be, um, and, and you said it was okay for us to talk about this and you know to the extent yeah, that you wanted to, um, you all were the exclusive repacker for Backyard Breaks. Correct. And yeah. that... Now they have flamethrowers and nebulas and all that, but um, there was a time when they relied solely on U USB to mm -hmm. provide their repacks. Right. So um, did you want to kind of speak on that? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, when we started, you know, USB was on a very much smaller scale. And then when I met Grant, he was, he was the one that introduced me to Backyard Breaks and sent them a couple, you know, cases for them to test out. They loved it. 
and we launched like our first phase of, you know, X amount of boxes or cases, you know, and then the demand was like, Hey, we're selling out too fast. We need more, you know, and it just kept growing and growing and growing. And, you know, we, you know, got, you know, to the point where like we're listening to their demand and, you know, we got, you know, the proper funding to be able to support that. And, you know, and we got a call before national and, you know, the owner had said like, Hey, we need, you know, the owner said, Hey, we need, you know, over a hundred you know, cases a week. Can you guys provide that? Mm. Boom. Okay. Let's, you know, talk with the team and see how we can grow to that. And we got everything that we needed getting ready to go to nationals like that Friday before nationals. We got the, a call say, Hey, I know we just got over negotiations. We just got over, you know, mm-hmm. discussing our demand, you know, what we need from you guys, but you know, we're making a business decision and we're going to go into a different direction. Can't go really into a lot of details and, you know, we'll give you guys, you know, a few months to kind of adjust and find new customers and, the whole night, like we're exclusive, like we're, you know, we, we put a stop to everyone that contacted us that wanted our product this whole entire time. We probably had over, you know, a thousand emails of people that wanted our product and we just mm-hmm. couldn't do it. It's like, if you wanted to get it, I'd buy it through backyard. So mm-hmm. we were just flying and mm-hmm. had a lot of success to where they just shut the door on us because, you know, they wanted to go into a different direction, which now you can see is, you know, flamethrowers and, the, you know, they're doing a great job, you know, with those. And, you know, from a, you know, I guess like an actual like business perspective, you know, it obviously puts a lot of, you know, it, it hurt, you know, yeah. you know, and we had to, you know, we had just bought a house, you know, and, and so like, I'm, we, we were just in our house for about like a month. You know, and to know like we have no business period was terrifying, you know, but it was at the end of the day, it was business is business. People are going to do what they got to do. You know, that's best for their business. That's what Backyard did, you know, and so it's like, you know, I, you know, had a lot of great conversations and, you know, there's nothing personal behind it. It's just pure business decision for them to do, you know, go the direction that they went. And so, but I mean, we, we made adjustments to our product and, you know, changed the dynamic on how breakers can sell our product to where, you know, that opened up because we only had one product and one price point period. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we knew exactly how to do it at a mass volume to where like now we have anywhere from like bronze lights, you know, to where we have infinities, you know, you're talking, you know, breakers are selling our bronze lights for $120 per card versus an infinity where people are selling for $3,200 a card, mm-hmm. you know, but it's like, there's so many different levels that we have now just because we're, we're listening and adjusting to like what, you know, our current customers, you know, want and need to be able to pro- provide that for their, their, their customers. And so, but, you know, it's, it was definitely a big learning curve. I mean, we're only in business for like less than a year, you know, at that point to where, you know, you can't, you know, go in, you know, buying a Rolls Royce, you know, you know, the, the second you graduate from high school, you know, you got to earn your way up. And so ne- nothing's going to be pretty, you know, for the, you know, for the long term, you just got to be able to adjust. And so, um, so yeah. Um, was- unless you're best friends with Ferris Bueller, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, sure. No, but uh, I really appreciate you sharing that personal story side because, you know, like you said, like it's just business, but it, it, I mean, you buy a house, I mean, you're implicating family yeah. and like, I mean, that's right. a lot of stuff. So I really feel for you, but I'm so glad you yeah. guys rebounded so well. Um, with yeah. That. I mean, it's, it was, it was honestly the best thing that could have happened to us, you know? And so, you know, we thought it was the worst thing. It was the best thing. It was probably the darkest six months of my life, oh, you know, but it's like, you know, cause there's just a lot of things that like why it literally had just moved here from Hawaii you know, oh, yeah, so yeah. it's like, so it's like he moves from Hawaii to Utah, well, that, you know, <laughs> you know, that's and all quite of a sudden, the, not a lot of people do that. I imagine, I, I imagine it's the other way. No, I mean, he, <laughs> Nothing against you. He, he just trusted, Utah. he trusted my vision and, you know, and just said, screw it, let's do it. And, wow. You know, Leap of faith. I, I mean, really. Dude, I, I love him to death for doing that. Yeah. You know, and I respect him for doing that. And, 
That's yeah. your long snapper. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I, I know. I was terrified that after his one his one year lease was up at his apartment that he was gonna. Be like, oh yeah. All right, yeah. I'm, going, I'm going back. I'm going somewhere else. Like, but he's like, nope. Like, I see like where this is going. Like, we're just going over like unnecessary hurdles of like, yeah. You know, people wanting to make their own repack. You know, because we are a third party. Yeah. You know. You know. It's there's not very many third party repacks out there. Mm. Um. You know, and so that's what makes us different. And so, but. You know, there's growing pains, but, you know, but we're, we're doing well now. All right. I'm going to say one little joke and then we'll get into the third party repacker and the Love rule it. of uh, you and I have talked about the the 10 K the 10 box case with three, four, three and all that. Right. Um, I can just picture you and Wyatt, like just about the house. you got the nice yard in the back and you guys are just like long snapping it to each other, just talking <laughs> about the business and like, man, you know, what are we going to do? And like, I could just see you guys just kind of like just chilling and bonding. And and that's just, that's, that's uh, awesome. If you catch us going to a show together and there's a football in the trunk, I make, <laughs> I make them snap one before we head in. There you go. Like I love it. I love it. So um, how important to you is it that like, you know, you guys are a third party repacker versus like people who do it in-house? And, and I know people who do it in-house can do it with integrity and transparency right. and value. But like, like, how, how do you see yourself in the, you know, in the stream, the, 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 the ecosystem of the hobby? So our, our big thing is, you know, we're very attention to detail on what's going on in the sports world and the sports card market. Um, you just brought up Josh Giddy. You brought up Wander Franco. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unfortunately, like we had a lot of cards of both those players to where the second that something like that happens, they are pulled and they are put off to the side until further notice, you know? And so, you know, I think that's what makes us different. You know, hopefully other repackers out there are doing the same. There's a lot of people that like can't take a loss, you know? And I think that's the biggest thing that mm. repackers have to understand is like, be okay with taking a loss and just work harder to gain it back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, be like Trey Lance, we probably spent like $15,000 oh, on, I went during preseason, I went and bought $15,000 of as many RPAs and autos and slaps of Trey Lance mm -hmm. that I could possibly get my hands on. Mm -hmm. Dude breaks his leg and we just had to, you know, send him off to consignment and get what we get and we don't throw a fit, you know? And so, you know, but there's a lot of people that just can't fathom taking that loss. And I get mm -hmm. it, but it's like, you know, at the end of the day, like we're putting on a show and we're putting on, you know, like we pay attention to all of our breakers live streams. Mm -hmm. You know, we try and you know interact with their customers. We pay attention to what their customers are saying, what they're requesting, mm -hmm. you know. So it's like a lot of people don't do that, you know, yeah. at least from a third party perspective, like they don't. Yeah. They don't do that. They don't have time for it. You know, we do, you know, because that's just kind of like part of who we are. Mm -hmm. And so, but, um, you know, but I think that's what makes us different is that we definitely pay attention to that, to where there's other breakers out there that make their own repack. And you can tell that it's their own personal cards that they have laying around and they're just trying to kind of piece something together, you know, uh -huh. to where, you know, you shouldn't see Trey Lance pop up, yeah. you know, in today's, you know, in today's repacks, yeah, you know, it's, just yeah. Un, it's just unnecessary, you know, until something happens to Dak or whatever. And Trey mm -hmm. Lance is the savior of the Cowboys season. Yeah. And boom, let's re, you know, let's revamp Trey Lance, you mm -hmm. know? And so, but like you can tell on, um, cause there's a difference between like breakers who are putting in their own PC cards into their own repacks mm -hmm. versus those who are going out buying cards for their repacks. Yeah. Got so, it. Got it. Two different, two different, di two different dynamics. So you you talked about bronze and infinity. So you have bronze, silver, gold, platinum, platinum and then infinity, titanium, and infinity. Titan titan okay, like six maybe if I if the math is right. It's so each each of those price points going from mm -hmm. one hundred and twenty to what? What are my notes say? Like Thirty two hundred. Oh my yeah. gosh! Wow, for one card. Wow. Um, yeah, that's great. This is this is the high end. I mean, yeah, absolutely. So. <laughs> Here's your infinity. There you go. LeBron, ref rookie refractor, uh, BGS, what is it, 9.5? BGS 9.5. As, as some, back oh, in God. 2022, you can look the comps up on this card. They used to be like fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. Now, right. like, now it's like, you know, more or less than like nine grand right now. Yeah. But And that's going into your infinity. 
it's going to go into our, our infinity. It will be a headliner. You know, it's just wow. cool to see these cards. But like, oh, I just read it. Yeah. Well, right, right before we hopped on, is I looked at a, a single bo- hobby box of this, you know, of yeah. this year, yeah. you know, like $19,000 for mm. a hobby box. And you get these one in, and I think it's one refractor, like, like one in every like four boxes or something like that. And yeah. Yeah. So it's like, the oh, chance, yeah. The chance You're not pulling getting... that. Yeah. I, no, let's exactly. just be real. You're not pulling that. And, yeah. Uh, so, each of those SKUs that you have, you have 10 box cases mm-hmm. and you seal them up in your production facility. The mm-hmm. people who receive them have no clue what's in what. No. You guys, um, when we were talking, you mentioned kind of like a 33% or 343. Three. Yes. So out of those 10 boxes in a case, if yeah. I, you know, if I'm, if I may explain it, and then you kind of tell me where the holes are, if, if I'm incorrect, right. Four of those, cards out of those 10 cards are going to be right at around the price point that people yeah. buy into that for yeah so we follow then like three a... okay, then sorry. three then three are going to be above comps and then three are going to be below comps so you are going to have like three out of 10 people kind of not be happy but again mm-hmm. we can talk about floors and ceilings and checklists and all that but like you right. don't have people who are getting completely skunked then you have four people who are going to be relatively happy and maybe they don't like that player and all that or but but if they buy into that sport they know that they're going to buy like you know again let's be real for football it's going to be a quarterback right. and then you're going to have three people out of those 10 on the opposite end where they're thrilled cuz again if it's a 30 20 dollar box and you're getting a 10,000 dollar lebron or 9,000 right. dollar lebron you're, right. you're thrilled right. so so what, what what am i did i say anything incorrect there or did, what what no, do you I mean, to that? the the biggest thing with repacks is transparency on the floors and the ceilings and so and it really does depend on like the style that the breakers are breaking at you know mm-hmm. so like the 33% rule, that's as if you got 10 different people that are buying them as personals, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's for head draft or stash and pass or just as personals, mm-hmm. you know, but you go in knowing that your odds are like if like, so let's say silver or silver level, we our floors are a hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. We are as strict as can be that the floor cards in that case are a hundred dollars, not $95, not $90. Mm-hmm. It's a hundred dollars. And what's the price point? Is... What's the price point for silver? Uh, so bre- breakers are selling those for three hundred dollars okay. uh, per card, and okay. so three hundred. Um, and so, but then like the ceiling could be, you know, and you have to be, I would say, kind of fluctuate with when it comes to ceilings. You know, our big thing is, you know, we've put in six, seven, eight hundred dollar, you know, ceiling cards and those types of levels. Mm. You know, but it's not going to guarantee to where, you know, we have to kind of set like a, a minimum like ceiling, or like where we say it's 500 plus, you know, or five, you know, 600 plus, whatever it might be, you know, but there's not to say that there's going to be a $600 card in there, you yeah. know? And so, but it's all about that transparency of like where people like understand, like the floors are always going to be whatever we, you know, say the floors are, mm-hmm. you know, if they're not, please bring it to our attention and we will fix it. Okay. You know? And so, and like, we'll explain, like, there's times where we put in a hundred dollar card, it got shipped and over, you know, on like a Friday, the break it and break it until Monday. And on like that Sunday, you know, that card comped at, you know, one of those cards comped at like 80 bucks when he opened it on Monday, mm-hmm. you know, it was brought to our attention. And like, we showed, it was like, Hey, like, we'll take care of it, you know, for now, but like, just understand, like, you know, when it went out on that Friday, like that was the comp, you know, it changed over the weekend you know, through an auction and you didn't break it until Monday, you know, like stuff like that can happen, you know, okay. but like that's where like, but like what I just explained to you right there, like every single card that we buy mm-hmm. has a purpose, has a story, mm-hmm. you know, and like what we bought it at, why we bought it at that, you know, just that way we have an explanation. And so the transparency is so key and, you know, for repacks and, you know, just ensuring like people are like, they know what they're buying into Mm -hmm. and, you know, but more importantly, just kind of understanding how breakers are breaking. There's some breakers that put one or two of the boxes and they do divisional breaks or they Mm do, you know, PYT. And so, you know, I love those because, you know, it's, there's only 10 cases per card. So they have to do a PYT for 32 teams for the entire case, you know, 22, you know, you know, 22 different teams, you know, aren't heading. 
All right. You know, but they're paying a small fraction of the cost. But it's like buying into anything else. Yeah. You know, but at least like those who win are, you know, automatically winning at that point. Even if you hit a floor card, you know, if you know at a hundred bucks, then you know the buy-in for that was, you know, substantially less. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so it really depends on who's breaking it and how they're breaking it. And so. Okay. You know, well, thank you for that. So I, I did have a follow up with regards to kind of like that one example. And I don't know if it's a live example. And I know you're not going to talk about the, the, the buyer and the card or I mean, the mm -hmm. card doesn't matter. But uh, when it comes to doing it right by the customer or the buyer and you're mm -hmm. like, you know, we'll handle it or we'll take care of the customer. Like, I mean, could you kind of talk about the range of things that you guys would do have done? Yeah, I mean, we've had customers, you know, ship us the cards back. You know, and we give them a card back or and we ship them out a card that, you know, hey, what's your PC? You know, and let's go into their PC mm. and let, we'll present them a card and, you know, we'll just swap it out that way. Okay. You know, and so because because like when we buy a card, you know, at a show or on eBay or whatever it might be, mm. if that, you know, say if we don't put it in for three or four or five days upon receiving it, mm -hmm. if the comps are different. But, you know, the day that we put it into our product, say mm. if it's less we're going to mark it down for less. It just is Got what it. it is. Right, you right. Know, if it's more, I can't tell you how many times that we've sent out product to where it was worth more than what we bought it at. But like, that's not our concern to change it to go up and benefit okay. us. It sounds silly from like a bit, like any any person that owns a business, but like, what are you doing? Like, you know, you know, if it you know, changes, you know, to hundred dollars more on a comp, like you should change it. But like, that's not, you know, that's not really our style. Yeah, I got yeah, you. So. Well, um, I, you know, just just <laughs> I did this yesterday, and I, I'm trying my very best not to kind of like harken back to what uh, my past podcast episode episode was about, and I'm trying my mm -hmm. best to kind of keep you all very, you know, like separate. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that yesterday I mentioned I've never bought into a USB uh, break. I did have a, a USB card, and that was like from buying it from someone who bought who got it from y'all. Right. Mm -hmm. So you know, and you know, it's like a Kevin Durant auto, and it's a vaulted um, in Arena Club for me, for myself right now. Right, um, graded it with BGS, and um, you know, it's it's like it's a really nice card, and I don't know what mm -hmm. they bought it, you know, bronze, silver, and all that stuff, but. Um, you know, I do like your, you know, the the stick. It was a raw card. Now that I think about it, it was they had the USB sticker on the top yes. uh, in a in a one touch, and um, but uh, yeah, I if I ever do buy, you know, the, guess what I want to say was the warning with the caveat is, yeah, I did not ask for anything in return for you being on this pod and vice versa. You right. know, we're talking about USB, um, but it's not like you guys are sponsoring or anything like that. That right. said, I, so I just wanted to kind of make that clear because some people think it's like pay to play with podcasts and it's not. No. Um, that said, if I ever do buy into a USB repack um, and I am not happy, which I doubt happen, uh, will, will happen. But if it does, I'm here to let you know, Matt, my PC is Michael Jordan PMGs. Just so. <laughs> Right. Oh, yeah. We got plenty of those. Things. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the only on. card that I actually collect. Yeah. Um, no, that's, a, that's a proper <laughs> plot. Yeah. That's so, funny. so, um, you know, thank you so much for talking about the packing. I know we got to like move it along and, and, and get to kind of like the questions from Instagram and we're already at like past the hour mark. We talked about buying. We talked about packing. Uh, we did touch on shipping with, like you said, you mentioned the breaker there, you know, um, shout out to two, three, eight. Um, mm -hmm. But like who, who, who are your buyers? Who are your breakers? Like, you know, what platform are they breaking on? Like what? Like, how do you ship? Like, can you can you kind of talk about the back end of repack? Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, it's, you know, supplies are definitely a thing you have to stay on top of, you know, when it comes to, you know, boxes, the design, packs, if you have packs or the foam or whatever it might be, shrink wrapping. Um, you know, we used to shrink wrap with an air gun, like a heat mm -hmm. gun in our garage and wow. like we would we would do like 20 cases but you're talking 10 cards per that's 200 cards you have to like you know by hand you know shrink wrap each one and, you know wow. we you know made an investment we call it big red it's a big you know shrink wrap machine and <laughs> you know you just turn it on you just literally just throw the you know the boxes in there and it just does its thing and saves us so much time you know yeah. but um you know but supplies is definitely something that like you definitely have to stay on top of you know, every every raw card gets a brand new one touch. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those things are very annoying to stay on top of. But, 
you know, you got to do what you got to do. And like little things like, I don't think I have any PSA sleeves, but like even like these, like the plastic sleeves for the Beckett's, yeah. you know, that's something that you have to buy an unlimited amount of just to protect the slabs. Mm-hmm. You know, I hate with the capital H, anybody that ever has Panini One, Flawless, uh, anything with like an actual manufacturer seal, yeah. please put this in a bag. Yeah. Like instantly. I was like, please don't, you know, keep it out and put it in a box and shuffle it around because those one touches, like they're, irre- they're irreplaceable. Yeah. You know? And, you know, I see so many Panini ones and it's because people are taking them out and they want to like look at the raw condition to see if they're gradable. And there's like, nah, it's not. Let's just put it back in a one touch. And but hmm. it, to me, it loses like, I would say like, it doesn't lose value, but it loses like, I don't know. I feel like it loses value. It loses its, it loses its true image. But um, bam, I mean, it's, you know, we have vendors that, I think we have like four different like core vendors that like this is their full-time job. Like mm-hmm. they don't do anything else. And they've made, they made more, they make more money than we do going out <laughs> buying it's, it's, it's disgusting. And, you know, but like how they do it is that's their skill set. You know, that's something that, like, I think you should bring on vendors, mm-hmm. you know, for a podcast and have them discuss it. I tell them all the time. I was like, don't tell me what you bought these cards for. <laughs> you know, it's going to be gross. I'm going to, you know, be jealous and I'm going to want to yeah. switch roles with you, you know. That's but, like, funny. it's it's crazy. I've never seen it before in my life. But, you know, we have, like, a core of, like, you know, about four that they travel to every show every weekend. And, you know, if there's multiple shows. They kind of uh-huh. communicate with each other on which shows that they're going to go to. I see. Would they yeah. be upset if you, even for the good ones, you give them a shout out, or do do you think they would want oh, to remain sure. private or for sure? Uh, you know, Boosted LA. Uh, okay. They're they're a big vendor of ours. Uh, Philly Kirk Cards it might be okay. Philly Cards. Philly Kirk. He just moved here okay. to Utah. You know, because he's here you, every week. He's like, you have a up. vendor who who moved to he, Utah. A, Man, you you were like. He's not, he doesn't work for us, nothing. He just, he said, like, he goes to shows and he flies wow. Utah every week to sell his car. So he said, screw it. Like, instead of flying all over the place, like, and then flying home, wow. he's like, I'll just make this home. I mean, you know, when you're, you're young and don't have wife and kids yet, like, mm-hmm. now's the time to make that decision. Wow. And uh, Boosted, they actually just bought a house in, in Utah as well. <laughs> Whoa, you were like, you're doing yeah. so much, uh, you know, great things for the Utah real estate. Yeah, um, no, it's awesome, you know. And market. so, yeah. And, so boosted yeah. Philly Kurt. Philly Kurt, you know, he does he does a really good job. Um, who else? We have a you know local guy, uh, father and son here in Utah that they kind of tag team, uh, you know, traveling to shows. You know, Tony okay. and Cooper. And, um, so yeah, I mean, they they do a really good job. Cool. They, you know, the biggest. Biggest thing for us with vendors, you know, working with them like that is like coming in, meeting us, and mm-hmm. come look at our inventory, you know, yeah. Yeah. and ask us and talk to us like, what do you guys need? What are you guys looking for? You know, so that way, like when they go to shows, like they kind of know what to look for, mm-hmm. you know. And so I think that's probably like a really important aspect of you know being a vendor. If you're buying cards, why why are you buying cards? Mm. I'm buying these for you know this repacker or that repacker, you know. And so I mean, there's Oh, there's a ton of repack, you know, or a ton of companies that do like mass production of repacks that mm-hmm. have, you know, their vendors that just truly understand, you know, on what they're looking for, you know, and I think that's really important. And so, because there's a lot of really good repacks out there, you know, there's a lot that are more in house that, um, you know, that they're not selling to other companies as a third party, you know. Gotcha. And so it's it's really it's really neat really neat uh, world to be in. Awesome. Um, so I think I'm going to have only time for one question from Instagram. And I this is the one that I did ask um, Roto as well. But before we get to that, I did want to get to the topic of checklists. Um, I, my understanding is that you guys don't do them or is, is that? No, because uh, we don't create series. Okay. And so we are we are buying and, you know, selling our repacks on a week to week basis. You know, mm-hmm. so it's, everything has a specific value. There's no like set uh, series to where like I know I'm I'm familiar with Roto to where like they create like a specific series. Um, okay. There's other repacks out there that have done that too, where they create like hundred cases. Yeah, and you know, but that might take them a couple, you know, two to four weeks for them to put together. 
they put together a hundred case series and then boom, they sell it out as like box or case, like, you know, one of a hundred or 56. Of yeah. 100. I think you the know, so you does that. the same so, thing. Yeah. Yeah. They do the same thing to where it's like a series yeah. to where like, you know, yeah, at that point, like you can grab all those cards that are on that, you know, and all those hundred cases and you can make a checklist. You know, I've seen, you know, guys on whatnot do the same thing to where it's like, Hey, we have 80 packs. Here's the checklist, you know, mm -hmm. from the 80 packs are, you know, that are going in tonight. You yeah. know, so that's more of like an actual like visual, you know, kind of like I think Gold Rush does, mm -hmm. has like, you know, a chase like checklist and, mm -hmm. um, you know, so that's really neat. We just, our thing is that we just don't have time to, you know, we don't have time to, you know, build out a series and have, you know, cases wait when they can just go out, mm -hmm. you know, to our, you know, to our customers. That's just our business model of, you know, just, you know, whether it's one case or 20, 30 cases, whatever it might be, but. You know, we don't have like a designated, you know, you know, preset, pre-built series. So I, you know, thank you for, for sharing that. And um, the question, the follow up question I'm about to ask is the only reason I ask it is not because I disagree with your decisions and it's your business. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm, I'm really, you know, happy that there's a that you provide value for customers and the fun chase mm -hmm. element and all that. The reason I asked the following question is because I wonder if some listeners might be thinking the same thing and maybe they're not, maybe they're just, mm -hmm. you know, driving and just zoned out and, or maybe, they just felt, <laughs> right. you right. know, um, but when it comes to the cases, I totally understand you, you, you ship them out on a week to week basis, but mm -hmm. what about providing a checklist for just that one case? Like here are the 10 cards that are in these 10 boxes within this one case. It's too, it's too small of a, I guess, too small of a checklist to okay. where I would say like our breakers would, I mean, I would say it's just too small of a, of a list to where it's not going to really benefit anybody. You know, it's though, I think the only person I, I guess it could benefit is, you know, the buyer, but like uh, it's 10 cards, you know, to where it would be different if like, you know, if it was like two or three or four cases that we sent out and just be like, hey, out of these four cases, like here are your top 10 chasers or whatever of like these four, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever it might be. But like one single case, you know, doing like a list, I would say it's just too much of a sample size to where, you know, too I just don't feel like it's, I, just, okay. I think it's just too small of a list to, okay. know, to where it would make sense. Okay. You know? All right. But all right. You know, if, like we had customers that ordered like six silvers. You know, if they asked like, hey, what are the top 10 hits from these six silvers uh -huh. in total? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. You know, I kind see. of thing. That's so cool. I would say like it would, for something like that, like it would have to come across as a, um, like a breaker request. Got you know, it. Like Breaker's a, request. You know, like, so, okay. Well, so here's, here's another great example. It's like, say if. Say if this was the Jalen Hurts uh, auto. Yep. Say if this was a headliner mm -hmm. or whatever. What if people don't like Jalen Hurts? Mm. You know, that's gonna from a breaker standpoint, like people aren't gonna buy into it. You know, and I'm gonna it. have a harder time selling. You know, I've seen another breaker on Facebook. He posted the the top. It was like I think it was six cards, mm -hmm. and he posted the top the the top three cards in that that six case card. Yeah took him three days to fill it and it's because people see like you know i'm not gonna you know risk my money you know for cards i'm not interested in but is that necessarily a bad thing though depends on which side you're on mm -hmm. you know and so it's you know that's where like this whole dynamic and like business from you know business from our side business from the you know the breaker side mm -hmm. like you're you're essentially like you might as well just say like hey i have a four box four box case here are your four cards you might as yeah. well just sell those four cards mm -hmm. you know but like a repack it's everything's sealed like panini, like panini has a checklist but like you get a case and they're not going to say hey here's what's in this case yeah yeah you know what i mean like this, they give you they give you odds of like who you can hit right you know, you'll, you'll never see them almost any of those cards right you know but when you okay. do like that's great but like you, you like checklists are cards that exist within that product but like that's mm. like a you're talking thousands of cases that are built true you know what i mean so like, that's a that's a set like series yeah in a sense you know but like you're not going to open up and, a hobby you're not going to grab a hobby box 
from Panini and know exactly what's inside that hobby box. Gotcha. And and one last follow up before we get to the the one question from Instagram. You you at USB currently have no um no plans to make a series. You guys are continuing the one. Uh, so there's things that we do want to do. We want to do like a golden ticket series mm. you know, where it's like, you know, 10 cards or 10, 10 cases or 20 K, whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. And, you know, say if we have, you know, something to where it's, you're chasing a card like this yeah. this is your golden yeah. ticket chase, mm-hmm. you know, but yeah, uh, in order to qualify for that, you have to pull a golden ticket from there's one golden ticket in, in each case. So whoever hits that golden ticket is now put into a, a spot for a raffle for that golden ticket chase. So it's like stuff like that that we can do. But like, you know, our thing is that we just we have such a high demand to where it hasn't been requested, you know, yeah. from our customers. Like they just they just want, they just want as much of our product as possible. Yeah, you they know, like your brand. They, 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 they just know that, you know, the true value is there. Right. You know, so. Well, you know, hats off to you. Like, congrats um, with with everything you've built. Um, so, the question from Instagram, and I'll get you out on this because I know we are no, <laughs> running pretty late here. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, I, I got to ask it because it's such a great question uh, yeah. from Pancake Analytics. Uh, I'll try to read it as verbatim as possible. But wax prices, all right? So they're increasing across the board. We we yes. all know the p- price of wax is just. It's like the price of eggs. Just, oh my goodness. Wax prices are increasing across the board while the individual product in wax is decreasing. The price point or the in singles is, is, is decreasing at a higher rate. Do you feel, as a repacker, do you feel repacking the product and creating better value for the customer is enabling the card manufacturer to release inferior products? And give you a moment to think about that. I will make a little caveat to say, although I do think it's a good question because it t- it's talking about value and you know wax prices and singles prices, it is kind of hard to ask you as a repacker, you know, like mm-hmm. um, to to put yourself in the shoes of Panini or ta- uh, or Fanatics. Right. But um, to the extent that you're able to answer that question, could could do you have uh, some sort of you know response to it? Yeah, I mean. You got to think at some point, Fanatics is going to create their own repack. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if you know, uh, uh, Leaf, Leaf, ma- mm-hmm. uh, Leaf makes their own, uh, you know, card like Leaf cards, mm-hmm. but they also have like Leaf Best of Basketball, Leaf Best yeah. of Football. Like it, it is a true repack, right? You know, right. of what they make. So it's like you can assume that Fanatics at some point is going to do that, you know, and mm. it's. How they do that, I have no idea, you know, but like, you know, it's how well did they do that if that's something that they decide to do at some point, you know, but that's where like honors is another good example of like kind of um, they, they rebuy older cards, have them sign it and serial number the actual cards. That's kind of like an example. Oh, no, we totally lost. I did not kick him out. Oh, here he is again. Right. We're about to get to a good part. There oh my go. goodness! I so, was like, "Fanatics has cut your mic." <laughs> right? No, for sure. Yeah. No, they're just like, "Don't talk about it." But no. Um, so yeah, no, Panini honors. They rebuy the old cards. They sign it and serial number it. Yep. So you have that aspect. I loved encased when they were sending them to the back end. They're grading them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that was kind of a unique, uh, you know, value where you can you either get an eight point five or you can get a BGS black label. Yeah. You know, and so I think that's where. You know, I think the difference is on, you know, on how they can kind of, you know, improve like their values. I would mm-hmm. say like for this 2023 year, you're not going to have, you know, CJ Stroud and Bryce Young and right. who's the other one? Will Levis. I think they're those. Anthony those Richardson are injured. A Rich. Yeah. Well, he's hurt. But I know he's signing with Panini, but like. Oh, I thought you were just talking about. Good, okay. No, yeah, but like. You know, so like those, you know, so right now, like new products coming out and people are just like, well, you're, we're not getting any of these guys, you know, autos. So it's like the mm-hmm. value is kind of like backwards in a sense, okay. right, you right. know, but like, but what they're doing is they're getting some of these more veteran players like Patrick Mahomes to sign, you know, more autographs, Joe Burrows, you know, you're starting to see more veteran football cards come out mm-hmm. um, to where I think that's where they're helping with like the actual wax. Yeah, they got 
Panini has Tim Duncan signing, uh, you know, supposedly Wemby's pro uh, mentor, right? Uh, he, right. He's uh, he's like uh, a great San Antonio Spurs center, and yep. it's like I can't even imagine the the if they even talk about it at all. But like you know what, how that all transpired, right? And like how intentional I mean, that'd be that. Awesome. I mean, we've had a couple of uh, of uh, Tim Duncan the autos, and it's just like really cool to see. So rare. from like back in. 1999 when he's signing cards and so you know, putting in yeah. like today's like repacks and so but you know i think there's definitely ways to like improve it but like that's why mm-hmm. you know repacks are the hot topic right now you yeah. know it's because yeah. we're able to put in like really cool cards that like you can't pull in 2023 you know product right now but i mean mm-hmm. not to say like you know the products you know you know bad is just not a really good on return on investment type mm-hmm. of deal but, i mean like you know, I would say like the biggest thing with repacks right now is that you're able to put in cards that people are just already looking for or cards that every slab, you're not going to mm-hmm. find a slab card other than in a case, but you're, you're not going to find a BGS 9.5, you know, autograph of Jalen Hurts. You have to pull the card, you have to submit the card, you have to hope that it gets a BGS 9.5. Right. You hit a redemption out of a hobby box. You know, you got to redeem it. It takes a long time, but guess what? Boom. Now it's here in front of your face. Or, you know, you get cards like this that we're able to come across. So let's think about it. Uh, Optic downtowns are a case hit. Right. So we have not only a case hit of Randy Moss, but now we have a black label, you know, mm. of this card, which is amazing. You want to talk about how hard it is to yeah. reach this level of that card? Guess what? Now it's going into a repack. You yeah. Know? So that's where, like, you know, people have to understand that repacks are good for a lot of different reasons, you know, otherwise mm-hmm. like, Hey, like, you know, instead of spending, you know, 500 bucks on a pack and potentially hitting a card like this, sure. Just go out and spend, I think it was like 1500 bucks, you know, for that, <laughs> like, you know, but that's where like oh. that thrill of like buying into repacks, you know, is like, there's people that are buying it and they love it for a specific mm-hmm. reason. Mm-hmm. If you don't love it, guess what? You're just out buying and not participating in the breaks, and you don't know. You know, there's thousands of people that are out there in this world that aren't participating in participating in breaks. They just buy and collect what they want to collect. Mm-hmm. And that's what card collecting is. Yeah. You know, it's buying what you want. You know, you don't. People don't have to buy into breaks. Yeah. You know, they do it because it's fun. They enjoy it because of the breakers. They enjoy it because this is different. You know, yeah. just, they do it because they can. You know, and so, and that's why, like, you know, the sports card industry is like thriving right now, just because Mm -hmm. people are able to participate in wax breaks. And guess what? Now they go sell the repackers, you know, or vendors or what sell on eBay. You know, I guarantee 100% of the people that I buy cards from on eBay have no idea that I'm on, you know, that we're ultimate sports, you know, but like, hey, they got to sell their card and, you Mm -hmm. know, they got to make their money. You know, and so and I right. think that's like that's just the hobby experience, you know. And so, you know, that's what it boils down to is the hobby experience. I bought I I bought the Bengals, I bought the Bengals, and I hit a Jamar Chase on card auto, and you know now I'm gonna go on and sell it. Boom! I had a great experience, mm-hmm. you know. But there's too many people that are just overthinking like this whole repack and mm-hmm. how it's a negative thing or it's a scam. It's it's not a scam. It's a business. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's a scam if people aren't doing it right. Yeah. And I think that's what makes us different is that we are doing it to the best of our ability. We make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes, mm-hmm. you know, but contact us and let us know. But like mm-hmm. it's a business. It's a it's a premium is what it is. We're putting yeah. together a premium, you know, and so you and people have to also understand, too, when you're buying and then, you know, you go to a, a card shop. You get a box of 2023 certified football box for $300 or whatever it costs to buy a box as personal. If you get there and your best card is a uh, who'd, Tank Dell, you know, RPA out of 99, super cool card. I can assure you that it's only going to sell for $75. Mm-hmm. Are you going to go crying to Panini and be like, hey, I spent $300 on this. I didn't get my money back. Mm-hmm. No, they don't think to do that. They just think like, oh, that was a bad box. Right. I'm going to buy another box because I'm going to hope that there's an Anthony Richardson one-on-one in that one. 
10 you know, cup. Yeah. You know, then they pull a Will, Will Anderson linebacker RPA and they're just like, oh, I got to do it again. Now like $900. Again. You know what I mean? So it's like, oh, yeah. Oh, no, we lost him again. That's Fanatics just cutting him out. We <laughs> There he is again. There you go. But yeah, All right. so, I mean, but Fanatics yeah. does not want you to talk about any of this, clearly. Well, I mean, it, but, I mean, it's one of those things where it's like customers aren't thinking, I'm going to go and complain to Fanatics or Panini, right? you know, for a bad box. They're just like, oh, man, I struck out. So, whereas, right, right. like, repacks, the people are just like, Oh man, like I spent 300 bucks and I only had a $150 card. Like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna complain because, like, you know, I every repack, like, should have, you know, everyone should get their money back. It wouldn't be a business if that was the case. It's really interesting. The blame, it's like we never blame, and I'm not saying they should be blamed, but like, yeah, I mean, maybe that maybe they should be blamed, like with Pancake Analytics question with about the inferior product. I mean when you have a monopoly or a monopolistic tendencies or the, the, the optics of a monopoly, right. you're, you can do whatever you want. You really can. Right. So, so when a person strikes out, they feel like they swung and missed, but maybe the pitch was like, you know, had tar or whatever the cheating thing is with baseball, you know, like maybe the right. pitch was like bad. Maybe it was a bad right. pitch. Right. Um, but with repacks, people want to just jump down your throats because they're like, oh, I got to get my money back and it's not fair. But again, <laughs> right. it's the it's the element of mystery and surprise and the entertainment value. So that's, you know, right. I, I haven't really bought much into repacks recently, but, you know, it's 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 there's definitely something you said about it. And like you said, if it's not for everyone, but for the for the buyers that do like your product, they they really like your product. Mm -hmm. And um and and for people who just want to collect their one player, then they can do that too if they want. So, so, so like my PC, I have the most random PC of all of all time. You know, I, have, I have like some like Barry Bonds, and if you ever heard of Pedro Slyakovic, of course, yeah, you know, I got I got yeah. I got those kind of like old school cards. But like my PC right now, mm -hmm. Cam Reddish, you know, but it's like, oh. but it's like I'm not gonna go buy Atlanta Hawks. You know his rookie year. I'm not yeah. gonna go buy you know, you know, today's world because he's not even playing for them anymore. I'm just gonna go no. out and buy the Cam Reddish cards that I want. Yeah, you know, and so but like that's where like, but that that's me as a collector. Mm -hmm. You know, but like, you know, but there are times like I participate in you know breaks all the time on mm -hmm. you know TikTok and you know I'll buy into breaks and I'll support other people that are doing repacks too. You know, and people think yeah. like like you know there's so much competition like. There's really for us as third party, there's only really like two or three, like, you know, in our field as third party repackers, mm -hmm. you know, that are, you know, essentially competition. But it's like still like I've I've shaken hands with Hip Parade, you know, I've mm -hmm. you know, they've we've set up as a vendor as well. And like they came and bought cards and you know, like it was they were buying different cards than we were buying, you know, than what right. we were buying. You know, but it's like you know, breakers that are making their own repack. Absolutely, dude. I would love to see what you guys put together. Mm -hmm. No, it's just it's it's just those that like, you know, that say like, oh, don't you know, don't buy USB because it sucks. You know, <laughs> right, buy, right? Buy our repack. It's like, well, all right. Well, well, now let's see what now let's see what you know right. what you got kind of thing. Like now right. you're just making it personal, but like at that point, it's like you know, we participate, we support you know, other companies that make their own repack. Cause that's okay. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I know fanatics has tried to cut your mic a couple of times. Uh, what <laughs> I am going to get you at really soon. Cause we're having a little bit of technical issues, but two things I want to say one, and I won't attribute this to you, uh, cause I've heard it from other folks, but you know, talking about these other breakers who do their own repacks, you know, it's really mm -hmm. interesting that the C bless video was a, you know, kind of like underhanded, uh, not underhanded, but like implicit implying, you know, we, we, a lot of us knew that it was kind of like generally talking about backyard and um, my understanding. And you know, I'm not trying to, you know, watch someone's pocket, but you know, the hobby, we're all so interested in like the ins and outs and there's always rumors yeah. floating around, but you know um, I have heard from multiple sources that, yeah, like, yes, it's not their repack, but also it is because, you know, just because you have different corporate structures, but you're also in the same building and this you know different right. suite you know different addresses right <laughs> mailing addresses but it's like the same street address because you're in the same area so it's all like really interesting that you do have breakers who 
try to make it seem like they don't make their own repack, but right. they also do. So <laughs> right. again, it, I think it does all ultimately always is going to come down to integrity, value, transparency. I, people are going to do what they want to do, but at the end of the day, you have to look at the biggest picture, which is the quality and the integrity of the product. Yeah. You know, but like if those you know if those guys are continuing to sell you know very strongly and they're selling out on a day-to-day basis Mm -hmm. they're doing it right at the end of the day they're doing it right you know and so it's there's multiple i you can't say that it's their own repack but it's their own exclusive repack like you know they're they're not gonna you're not gonna see that product anywhere else yeah they're not selling that to other break big breakers right it's it's more it's in-house it's the only place you're gonna get that product right 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 you know so there's there's a lot more to it you know behind the scenes or whatever it might be but at the end of the day like if it's a if you're pulling good quality cards like Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Keep keep doing it. Keep crushing it. Keep doing it for the good of the hobby. Yeah. That's, yeah. At the end of the day, like it comes down to doing right for your everyday customer. And that's right. like what we strive for. Like there I can't tell you how many times like we change values, we pull mm-hmm. players because of bad performances or you know, bad perception. Mm-hmm. Jordan Jordan Poole, get him out of there. You know, Clay Thompson, the, Draymond Green, like those guys are legends, but it's like we're not going to do our customers a favor by giving them, you know, Clay Thompson or Draymond Green autos right now. Yeah, yeah. Because, because um, like our our thing is like this is another. This is your everyday, you know, type of card. The Jamar Chase auto, yeah. Yeah, where Redemption. you where you want a customer to be able to pull this it's card. Liquid. You want yeah. people to take it to a show, put it on yeah, eBay, right, and be able to right. sell it. Have a good yeah. That's what we yeah. do. Yeah, it's a you it's know. it's a commodity card. It's liquid, and so you're providing 100%. that. Um, 100%. again, it comes down to like the <laughs> yeah, and let's get Jordan Portal out of DC. He doesn't want to be <laughs> right, here since, right. since the we, day we have, one. We have some, and he was good when he no. was with the Warriors, but now that he's uh, kind of just exposed some stuff, like get him out of here, get him out of here. Yeah, exactly. That's fine. Um, we have again. This is a hobby not for people who have no disposable income. You you have to have some, and so the people right. who do have the adult money. We just talked about how it's wonderful to play in the snow when you're a kid, and then when you're an adult, you have to shovel out your car. Right. The one thing you could maybe look forward to later in that day is you can uh, open up some wax repacks, buy some singles, do something, be right. you know, spend some discretionary income into the hobby. So I think maybe that's the way I'll get you out. Um, thank you so much uh, for appearing. This might have to be two parter. We've gone over ninety minutes, I right. think, at this point. I can keep, I can keep going. No. I, I, we just I'll have call, to have I'll you call, on call, another time. I'll call Uber. Uber Eats and home. Bring me another That's Starbucks. And we'll start all over. Oh my goodness! Oh, you are doing so much uh, for the uh, uh, for the Utah <laughs> for the Utah businesses and the hobby. But thank you so much, Matt. Uh, you've been excellent. I uh, really appreciate all the just transparency and openness that you provided for the listenership. I hope they gained something out of it. Uh, so uh, have a wonderful rest yeah. of your day. You know, and, and I, you know, I encourage, you know, not only you, but, you know, even, you know, your listeners, if they have more questions, mm-hmm. let's jump back on and, you know, let's answer those questions. Okay. Awesome. You know, I can, I can sit here all day long and, you know, do the best that we can. And, you know, but same with you, everybody's trying to learn about repacks and, you know, the, positives and the negatives but it's like there's questions that are going to arise yeah you know from this right you know alone which hopefully it's good maybe it might be something that like we learned that might be you know that we could learn from as well you okay. know and so you know I, I definitely encourage you know people just just ask us you know gotcha. no one no one's hiding anything just just ask us and you know we'll be upfront and honest and you know hopefully we can you know put some clarity to you know this fun industry that we're in but Go buy cards. Come sell cards USB. Awesome. Thank you so much, Matt. Uh, Have a wonderful rest of your day. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely chat soon. Cool, man. Thanks, Danny. All right. Take care.